my first encounter with this board was at a debate for uh, the strengths and weaknesses of the evolution. I've attached a summary of my rebuttal of those alleged weaknesses. The worst part of my opponent's behavior in that debate, and which is relevant here, was when he told me that there were a number of transitional fossils he was aware of, but that he wanted to teach students that there were none. He said it was important that they believe that there were none. He knew better, but he admitted his intent to mislead students anyway. And now I read that one of our reviewers would like our textbooks to tell the same lie. Uh, my testimony cites a detailed zoological description of hundreds of unambiguous transitions, even according to the strictest definition of that word, just from within vertebrate paleontology alone. That list is also 20 years old, so I posted a video called The Ninth Foundational Falsehood of Creationism, wherein I showed uh, dozens of additions discovered since. Uh, the 15th episode of that series explains what a scientific theory is, and one should be educated in that before advising others on how to be educated on it. But our reviewer says that students should be taught alternative theories to evolution. There are none. Evolution is the only explanation of biodiversity with either evidentiary support or measurable accuracy, while intelligent design creationism meets exactly none of the criteria required of a scientific theory. We know and can show that evolution is literally a fact of life. We know it works, we know how it works, we can see it work, and there's several ways to measure, test, and trace it, and there's practical advantage in understanding the realities involved. The point is, we cannot ask and should not expect textbook publishers to misrepresent the facts and deliberately deceive our children in order to cater to those who do not know or do not care what the truth really is. Thank you.